All right, we can get started. <clears throat> this is standalone Cinder. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Cinder, what it is, um, how it works with OpenStack and sort of the normal deployment. We will uh, talk about and demonstrate Cinder alone without OpenStack or any of the other services running. Uh, we'll make a, a case for Cinder with at least Keystone and Glance. We'll show you that as well, and uh, hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A. The slides are going to be available, or they're already available here at uh, Google's short URL, if you'd like to find them. I'll show this again at the end. I'm Scott D'Angelo. Uh, I work for IBM. Cinder core developer. Uh, you can get a hold of me through IRC or email. Thank you, Scott. I'm Ivan Kolodyazhny. I am also a Cinder core developer, and I joined Cinder team, I guess, two years ago, and I work with OpenStack Science Diablo release. Walter? Hello. I'm Walt Boring. Yes, that's my last name. Um, and I, <laughs> I joined the Cinder team back in the Grizzly time frame, and uh, I'll be showing a demo at the end. Thanks. So what is Cinder? Um, from our wiki, Cinder virtualizes the management of block storage devices and provides the users with a self-service API to request and consume those resources without requiring any knowledge of where the storage is actually deployed or on what type of device. So Cinder basically abstracts away your storage and provides an API to get to it. So Cinder is a software-defined storage management system. Uh, this is kind of what Cinder looks like, similar to all, uh, or at least many, OpenStack services. You uh, connect to the Cinder API server via REST, either through the client or directly with the uh, HTTP. A message bus transmits messages from the API to the scheduler to determine where to deploy a volume, where to create it. Um, depending on criteria you may have set up in your configuration. Uh, the message bus also will pass information to the Cinder volume server, which does the work uh, for Cinder. Volume servers uh, have drivers uh, that interface with the underlying storage, and so uh, that's our architecture for Cinder itself. So what happens when you attach a volume? Uh, this is the normal use case, not Cinder standing alone, but uh, the, the OpenStack deployment you may be familiar with. So you would interact actually with Nova. Uh, you'd go to the Compute API, uh, make a request to attach a volume. Nova itself will use the Cinder client to connect to the Cinder's API. Through the messaging bus, it'll go to the Cinder volume server. And then, depending on your deployment, you'll use the proprietary backend or the individual backend uh, driver to connect to the storage. This is where we get information on how to attach the volume. So iSCSI targets, fiber channel information, um, CEP or NFS have their own connection information. This is all passed back up through Cinder, back through the API to Nova, and then Nova will use that information to directly connect the volume from the storage to the compute host. So Cinder is no longer a player in this when Nova is uh, interfacing with the storage, uh, then the data path, Cinder's out of the picture at this point. Uh, the tool that uh, is used in Nova for this is OS Brick, which is the underlying connectivity uh, service. So the question really is, why not just use OpenStack uh, for your Cinder connectivity? Um, so one reason is this. Uh, if you want OpenStack, if you have need of all the services, you deploy them all, you're running a big cloud, that's all fine and good. But there is some complexity to OpenStack. Uh, this is an old picture, but I think it's still applicable. Um, so what are the use cases for Cinder standalone? Uh, one is, as we just showed with the complexity of OpenStack, it gives you the software-defined storage management without all the overhead of deploying all those resources. So Cinder standalone will work with Docker containers. Um, we believe that all of the supported Cinder drivers will work uh, with Docker containers to attach a Cinder volume in a standalone way. Except LVM. LVM is a little more complex because uh, of the way it uses loop deck devices, the way it uses UDEV. It's been done, but it's a little tricky. Most of the other drivers will work sort of out of the box with the, the tools we're going to show you today. 
Cinder will work on almost 100 storage backends. That's just the in-tree supported drivers. Uh, all the drivers are open source. They're in the tree. They, are, uh, they run CI, CD on every patch, so we know that they work. Um, so when you get Cinder as your software-defined storage management, you, you, you get all these drivers. Uh, there's a list of them approximately, so if your, your driver's on here, or if you don't like your driver vendor and you want to kick them out and get a new one, uh, you have options with Cinder. And most importantly, Cinder is open source, so uh, lots of proprietary vendors will give you a software-defined storage solution, um, but it's not open source. It's not uh, it's under active development. Cinder's very mature, just gave you some pipe commit statistics, 369 commits, 140 bugs fix, et cetera. A very active community. So unlike uh, uh, a proprietary system, if you were to use Cinder, um, you're going to get uh, the, the vibrant community and the active development. So I think Yvonne is going to talk now about uh, Cinder as it's normally deployed with OpenStack. Thank you, Scott. So I believe many of us started work with OpenStack using DevStack. It's the simplest way to deploy OpenStack on your workstation, virtual machine, etc. So I will show you a simple demo with DevStack. Okay, I've got almost the default configuration of DevStack. What's going? Where is the video? <laughs> it should be a video. Oh, okay, maybe it's loading. Oh, so on the, it's our lovely it should be def default DevStack except single volume driver. I used CERP. RBD driver to this demo. Oh, okay. So, Cinder uh, standalone starts, I guess, two years ago, on World Health, years ago, when we were requested to use Cinder with Ironic. That's why I will show you a short demo how to attach volume to Nova instance, and then you, uh, I will create some file on this volume and read this volume from the DevStack host. I will you seen the local attach feature for it. It allows you to attach volume on any host. And uh, one requirement for this is seen the client and seen the brick extension, which is available on Pipe, on Debian packages, Ubuntu, I believe on CentOS 2. I did not test it. So we've got some issues oh. with. Internet Must connection. be the Wi-Fi, yeah. Um, it's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's loaded enough of it. I don't know why it's not playing. It just didn't okay. auto-start. So I will skip some. Uh, this demo is uploaded to YouTube, and all links will be available at the end of our presentation. You can download it. You can download DevStack config file and use it on your own environment. So this is using Ceph, right? Yes, it uses Ceph. And this is the standard dev stack deployment that most developers use when developing on any given project, right? So they can they stand up their dev stack, which includes almost all all of the services. Yes, it includes Nova, Glance, Keystone, Neutron, Cinder API, Cinder Scheduler, Cinder. Of course, volume, because obviously you use Cinder. Yes. Okay. All right, so what box are you logging into here? Are you doing SSH? Oh, yes, it's Cirrus default image. I attached Cinder volume to this instance, and I'm using the default tools to create uh, disk partitions and create file on it. Uh, 
As a result of this demo, you can see that you are able to attach your volume to any host and read all data. So the one of use cases is ironic this, and containers as Scott mentioned and also it could be used for troubleshooting issues when you've got something went wrong with your instance and you can attach volume to compute host to some backup host and do anything you need. All right, so you just wrote some data to a file there. And So this is showing that you know we can detach a volume from one host and then attach it to another, I presume. Oh, seeing the local touch feature works only for admin users because it uses iSCSI connection or IBD connection in case of safe drivers and safe backend. So what he's actually showing here is the Cinder client that has the um, Cinder client brick extension installed. So that way you can uh, attach a volume to any bare metal host. Um, so that's not actually inside a, uh, a VM, right? That's, that's, well, I guess that could be a VM, but it could also be bare yeah, metal. Yeah, sure. So the original impetus for all this was that <clears throat> using Ironic to, to use bare metal, uh, we needed to have Nova spun up in order to attach a volume to a, to a bare metal host, which seemed a bit ridiculous. So we, and by we I mean Yvonne, wrote <laughs> the uh, Cinder client Python brick extension that enabled Ironic to start to use Cinder without having Nova in the picture. But in effect, it basically allows anyone to use this tool uh, to attach a Cinder volume. Uh, to be honest, Walter starts OS break implementation in Cinder 3, and the, after we moved it out of Cinder to OS break library, we were able to implement these things. All right, so what are we seeing okay. here, Ivan? Does it go backwards? So let's talk about Cinder standalone. Uh, <laughs> it's almost the same, but as Scott mentioned, we need a lot of services to start Cinder with Nova, Keystone, all the stuff. It could be complicated and not needed if you need only storage management. So how can you get it installed? Of course, you can use DevStack, but it's not production ready. It's only for development and testing purpose. So you can use operation system package manager like apt install Cinder, or yum install Cinder, but in this case, all configuration will be your responsibility. So you have to create Cinder config and so on. Uh, that's why as one of them, you can use OpenStack Ansible. You can use CF, uh, CF uh, Puppet, but uh, all of them requires Keystone. Uh, to be honest, OpenStack Ansible requires Keystone too, but we work on it, and I hope it will be merged as part of Pike release, and we will get seen the standalone mode with OpenStack Ansible out of the box. For now, I've got some dirty hacks in OpenStack Ansible. You can clone my repo and play with it. Come on, internet, <laughs> work. <laughs> so our uh, uh, demo is pretty much the same, but I use OpenStack Ansible. I use only Cinder. OK. As per requirements, I configured Cinder no all support. It's uh, old feature in Cinder API, but Cinder client will support no all mode only for bike release. 
Uh, of course, you can use new Cinder client and all the Cinder APIs. It will work too. That's why I installed Cinder client for a master branch, because now all feature will merge it one or two months ago. And as you can see a, a bit later in the demo, I use uh, only Cinder services. I use Cinder APIs, Cinder scheduler, Cinder volume. All of them are, works in containers except Cinder volume because it's complicated to use LVM inside containers. I mean, to use LVM and provide volumes to consumers. All right, so it looks like you're talking to a, a Cinder instance somewhere, right? Yes, and it, as you can see, only Cinder, RabbitMQ, and MySQL servers are running. Nothing else, no Keystone, no ne Neutron, no Glance, no Nova. And you're still able to use Cinder, attach volumes, and use it like you use with Nova. Mm -hmm. And those are all running in a container there, right? Yes, everything in container except Cinder volume. And you could so run Cinder volume in a container if you had a, a different back end yeah, than LVM. Storage, right? You can use Cinder volume in containers for any volume, any remote storage, like Ceph, NetApp, SolidFire, SolidFire, I'm sorry, and so on. Pure storage. Pure. <laughs> <laughs> So I use Cinder Brick extension here. So after the local attach is complete, you can see in that output there that it shows the actual raw um, UDEV device that shows up. Um, and then after that, it looks like you're partitioning it and formatting it. And I use the same virtual machine for attaching volume running, but you can use the somewhere and attach volumes to your desktop, laptop, or even smartphone, I guess, with Android. <laughs> Vault, same. Yeah. Uh, Vault shows you the Something fun them. Yeah. yeah. An even more risky demo. Yes. <laughs> the coolest demo <laughs> well, on the summit. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so this is just the, the, the raw Cinder services, right? Cinder scheduler, API, and yep. Cinder volume. There's no Keystone involved here. There's no Glance involved. It's a real standalone mod. Yep. So how is it authenticated? Uh, Good question. This, this is no uh, I use no auth mod for Cinder here. It means no Keystone, no authorization, no authentication, so all users are admins, and so on. And can see everything. Yeah. So yeah. don't try this at home. Is the, <laughs> if you wish to have authentication, you'll it have, could be you'll, used you'll use on some trusted environments, like one tenant clouds. Uh, yes, uh, you can implement Cinder client plugin to use directly LDAP without Keystone or anything else. Well, there are a lot of options, actually. Yes. Yeah. 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 And of course, you can use Keystone and everything will be okay. Which we'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, we got several issues and limitations for standalone mode. Uh, not all supported feature cinders work with no house because nested quote requires Keystone V3 API. Uh, we don't support all of existing drivers. Uh, we support only LVM and RBD backends. It's mostly because we, we don't have a lot of environments, a lot of storages to test it. So if you are interested in extending this feature to use your storage with your protocol. 
so it's critical, maybe fiber channel. It's easy to extend, mostly add to the line to the code. We can dis discuss it after the talk if you are interested. We, we've got POC of NFIS support, but it's too tricky, not secure, mm -hmm. and has a lot of concerns. So I'm not sure it will be merged in Cinder. It uh, works now only for Linux hosts. So you can run Cinder anywhere on Linux, on other services, but to attach volume directly to this host, only Linux operation system is support. I guess it will be not very hard to add Windows support. If anyone is interested, welcome to contribute to it. Yes. And of course, I cannot mention security issues because without Keystone, we've got a lot of security issues. Even with Keystone, Cinder standalone mode uh, provides to use uh, many knowledge about Cinder API itself, about storage network, about storage protocol storage itself. That's not what Cinder, Cinder is supposed to do, but it's how it's implemented, it's how uh, ISCI that other storage protocol works. So it's up to you, up to cloud operators to configure or security, or to configure m maybe per tenant network to storage for this feature. So we provide this feature, but it's up to operators to configure it right. I, I hope um, we will have some security guidelines for it soon. So it will be easy to implement in production environments. Okay, so Thinking about Keystone, Walter will show you how to work with Keystone. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Ivan. All right. So, so what we kind of showed here, uh, what Ivan showed, is how to use Cinder just bare bones, absolutely bare bones. I actually installed the uh, Cinder myself um, from the Ubuntu packages, and you can actually get that up and running with no Keystone, no um, uh, no Glance. Um, it's it does function, but you know you're missing some key features that, um, that Ivan kind of talked about already, uh, which is you know, the ability to do authentication. <laughs> that's a pretty big thing, right? Um, and one of the other capabilities that's not there, if Glance is not there, is the ability to, to copy volumes to images and images to volumes. It's sort of a way to do backups. You do that a lot when you're doing a standard OpenStack deployment. Um, when you want to duplicate volumes and, and create images that you want to boot later, um, so there's a use case here for adding Keystone and Glance as part of a standalone Cinder deployment. Now, Keystone gives you the authentication that you, that you probably are going to need. Um, and Keystone, as you know, has different authentication backends that you could use if you want to deploy within an enterprise. You could um, configure Keystone to use LDAP um, if you want. And OpenID, I think it also supports and various other backends Keystone can do. So, there's a lot of value for a standalone Cinder deployment for Keystone itself, and it's, it takes quite a bit to stand it up manually, um, but there, there's a lot of value there. And Glance, of course, is the other part that I already talked about here of, of being able to do the image to volume and volume to image operations. And if you don't need that, you can actually disable it in the policy file in, the, in, in the Cinder policy when you deploy it. Um, but it's, um, I think it's a pretty valuable thing. All right. I think my slide is next. So I, I brought some bare metal nodes with me here to do a, a demo, and I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to work. So I, I try and do things a little bit differently in the community and try not to live up to my last name, which is boring. Um, so I wanted to do something that was really risky and kind of crazy and stupid, but kind of interesting and fun. And I learned a lot in the process. So. Um, what I set out to do was to use Docker containers on my bare metal and, and deploy the Cinder services, right? That doesn't sound like it's really that difficult to do, um, but I'm using a different kind of bare metal, and um, one, one of my nodes is a Raspberry Pi. Um, so 
I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero here as one of my clients. I have a server that's running, which is a Raspberry Pi 3 that's right here. Um, and I'm trying to be careful not to unplug the power because it would totally roast me right now. Um, and I also have another Raspberry Pi 3 here that's also another client that I'm going to use to uh, create volumes and attach volumes and so on and so forth. All right, so let's plug this guy in and get it booting. If this is something kind of live. Okay, that's plugged in. My phone here will show me when it's online. So, uh, all right, so this is the network that I have. This is my cloud, right, which is ridiculous. It's my cell phone uh, acting as a Wi-Fi hotspot um, so that way I can have connectivity between all of my Raspberry Pi machines here. Um, so yes, I am going to do iSCSI over Wi-Fi. That's ridiculous. Um, but hey, why not, why not try that here at OpenStack at a, at a live presentation? Hey, that, that sounds great. What a great idea. <laughs> All right. All right, so. We need faster Wi-Fi. Yes, we need a faster Wi-Fi. OK, so it looks like everything is up and running according to my phone. So let's go over here. Um, so. All right, we got that up. So 221 is my server that's right here. That's running all of the services. Let's make sure we can get on there. Come on, baby. All right. So what I wanted to do was use, was use Docker to deploy a bunch of containers for MySQL, RabbitMQ, um, uh, Keystone, Glance, all the three center services. And as they have been mentioning before, um, we. I had a really tough time getting LVM working inside the container itself. I tried just as much as I could to get it to work, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, there's a lot of issues with needing privileged um, access to the host system to get um, the loopback devices and UDEF to work correctly. But even when you do that, you start getting duplicate loopback devices, and the host system says, wait a minute, what's going on? And it starts really messing with you. Um, there's probably smarter people that can help me figure that small piece out, but I decided after I was running out of time, I was working on this a couple days ago, <laughs> getting that up. Linux limitation, actually, yeah, because it, it's not a native space. Yeah. So uh, I, I got to the point where I, I just had to punt and try something different, right? So the cool thing is, though, is that I did learn that, in fact, you know, Cinder and all of Cinder services itself work great inside of containers, even on a Raspberry Pi uh, and Docker. And it does work, and it's great. It's really, really cool. But unfortunately, I'm not going to show you that cool part, because uh, <laughs> I couldn't get LVM to work. But like they said, if, if, you, if I had actually lugged along an actual storage array that I could get my Raspberry Pi to talk to, then I could use that to serve up by SCSI volumes. Um, but those are a little bit bigger than Raspberry Pi. So, um, so I decided to use um, DevStack. It's, it's an old anchor of, of ours as developers. We use that on a daily basis, you know, for developing and, and deploying and stuff. So it's not as sexy as, as Docker containers, but trust me, it did almost work. All right, so, <clears throat> oops. All right, so here, here we see, you know, uh, your standard um, dev stack screen set up as your stack is up and running. And you can see here clearly that there's just Keystone, uh, Glance, and the Cinder services running there. Um, and that's what's running on, on one of these boxes. And so let's go over to the other client, the, the other Raspberry Pi. And I'm pretty sure that one is 63. Um, yes, it is. OK. Get on that one. Hopefully it comes up and it's working its way and there it comes. Okay, so this is my other Raspberry Pi that's sitting up here. Um, and I'm going to log in as root because in order to do an attachment um, using the Cinderbrick client extension, you need root access to do the actual uh, attachment piece here. So, um, okay, so I have a script that I created that helps me set up. Um, the virtual environment as well as the environment variables um, that are needed to uh, set for the Cinder client. And so that's what I'm setting here. So let me make sure I get this right. Uh, 43.221. Okay. All right. So now I should be able to do Cinder list. And let's hope and pray that this actually works. It takes a little while sometimes because this is a Raspberry Pi. Um, and it's over Wi-Fi. 
So it's not going to be the fastest demo you've ever seen. There we go. Okay, so we got a cinder list. All right, so let's let's create a, a volume here. Uh, is it dash dash or it's single? Well, let's try one. I probably got this wrong, of course. I'm trying to create a. All right, I did it wrong. <laughs> Display name now? I th dash. Okay, I thought that was I thought that was deprecated. <laughs> Yes, I thought that was deprecated. Okay, thank you. Thank Name you. is optional, you know. <laughs> yes, it is optional, but it helps. It helps to make myself look silly doing a demo. <laughs> okay, so hey, there it is. It's working. Let's go over here, and, and we can see some API requests going on. Let's see if I can switch screen windows here without blowing things up, and evidently I can't. Uh, maybe it's my fonts. Why can't? Oh, maybe that's right. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me. Let's get out of here. All right. Let's let's start over slightly here. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Yes. The, if there's anything that can go wrong during a live demo, this it will. Okay. So uh, my SD card may be going south on me, which is what happens on, on these things. OK, so let's see if I, if I have any services over there running still. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You know you want to work. Hey, and it says it's available even. How about that? All right, so let's go the, the extra mile here and try and attach the volume. And science last. Release in the local touch supports different network connect, so you can uh, configure which network adapter will be used to a, as storage network. Why can't I see? I wanted to show the Cinder volume service, but I can't. My well, screen's giving me fits. Okay, hey, there it is an iSCSI volume attached to a Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi. That's ridiculous, I know, but this is the way I do things. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how much time we have left, but uh, I could show a demo of it actually working on this little guy here in this other, in this other uh, screen here, but, um, but I think we're getting... Six, seven minutes. We have six, seven minutes. Do you want to see me try it? I'll try it. to do one, I think. OK, this is a single core CPU. It only has 512 megs of RAM. Um, it's running at 1 gigahertz. Um, and it's, it takes even longer to execute anything just because it's, you know, it's only a single core. Uh, we can come over here and oh, there's the request. It looks like it's coming through. Hey, there it worked. OK. I thought I could do this. That's not going to work. I thought for sure that will work. Name. Come on. I think name works. I think name does work. Name works. I think it does. Display name is deprecated. It does mind. work. It does work. <laughs> name Display name was fine. deprecated a while back. It's yes. actually name. So I just well, forgot the, da guys. the leading dash last time. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, let's, let's make sure it's available. Then we'll do the attach, and then I'll call it. The, the demo gods are kind of sort of with me here today. <laughs> it's a miracle that I've gotten to this point. OK, it's available. I'm root. Let's do the local attach there. Let's not try and attach the one that's already attached to the other machine. Do we have multi-attach working yet in Onion? This Raspberry would have been a Pi. great demo to show that. I actually thought about that. I'm like, well, if I'm going to actually do that, I need to write some files to it. I'm like, well, OK, I can't do use EXT anything, because that would immediately blow up. And I'm like, well, I need to install GPFS. And I'm like, oh, god, do I want to do GPFS on Raspberry Pi? No. OK, so <laughs> I just thought I'd get to this point and see if I can get this to working. And hey, there it is. It, it did, in fact, work. It attached. 
Um, and now we have an iSCSI volume attached to a Raspberry Pi Zero W over Wi-Fi on a cell phone on a conference. All right, so there we go. We... <laughs> Good job, Walt. We have a, a couple minutes for questions if, if, if there's any questions. <laughs> uh, we're done. Oh, you right? want me to do a benchmark on it? Okay. Uh, I had a question. I think Yvonne I might have made the comments. Um, not all of the drivers support standalone Cinder? Uh, no. Uh, I seen, uh, it not depends on driver implementation. Uh, but Cinder local touch feature <laughs> works only for iSCSI and RBD protocols. Ooh, it's only because we did not test it and we do not want to enable something which won't work. So, so, but, but any, any one of the drivers that supports iSCSI attach to the, to the, the Nova hosts today can support oh, local attach over it's iSCSI. Almost all drivers work over iSCSI, but there's a fiber channel or yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Answer your yeah. question. Yes. 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 Yeah. All, all iSCSI drivers that should work in Cinder as they do to Nova should work in this case too. Should. What, what are the underlying API calls? Like, I noticed, you know, you, you have to run oh. it as sudo. Uh, it, it says it's, it's it, the, the OS brick, I guess, plugin su supports I, iSCSI. D does it have to yes. use a specific iSCSI target implementation on the machine that you're locally attaching to? I don't yeah. even know if I'm using the right Yes, it, it requires open iSCSI package, and that's all. And it uses the standard Cinder APIs for attachment like Nova does. Questions? So you can see here at the bottom my, I'm just using HD Parm to do a, a, a generic, really lame uh, performance test. And you can see how incredibly speedy iSCSI <laughs> to a Raspberry Pi W0 is. And I tried running it on my, my Pi 3, and it's, well, it seems to be worse. But <laughs> it could be for any number of reasons. So anyway. But it'll work better on your own enterprise system. Yeah, so you know, when you want to deploy your cloud on a Raspberry Pi cluster, then this is the way to do it. <laughs> All right. All right. Another question? Yeah. Oh, basically, I just want to ask like, uh, how you get rid of the most of the OpenStack uh, other components. Then I just wonder, like, what's the really usage here? I mean, what's the difference between this one with uh, you just run the iSCSI ADM command to attach a LAN? You know, I mean, it, it, without <coughs> time, maybe you don't even have a, a QoS controls on all, all the drivers. Do you have it or not? Yeah. yeah. And, and also, like, uh, how do you play with the live migration in this case if you want to do this? So, so one thing that is not tested to my knowledge is some of the other features of Cinder, like the migration and backup, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some of those probably could be made to work pretty quickly, but they're at this time untested. But, but why use it? Was that your first question? Uh, you know, really it would just be if you wanted to have some, well, or you wanted to have some way to manage storage and you didn't want OpenStack. I mean, if you're here for OpenStack and you have an OpenStack cloud, you, you get all this. But if you need some way to manage storage, um, you want to be uh, vendor independent and open source, you want to have a way that uh, provides an API to your users that's consistent, so that they can abstract away the storage. You can get all the features of Cinder uh, without the OpenStack overhead of Nova and uh, Neutron and all the other things you have to deploy. Yeah, you, you, could, you could have purchased a particular vendor's back end and, and use this to create your volumes and then realize, hey, I want to switch over to another vendor or, to, or Ceph and go open source. Then you can use this to actually migrate your volumes to, or, to or that back ends. And then you, or, or open, open stack too. Three or open different stack. vendors in SAF, you could have a mixed deployment of storage and, and make this work. <clears throat> right, but uh, what I'm asking is that the other thing is that in open stack, for the senior driver, you can conf configure different drivers for different tiers for the uh, QoS, but in this standalone, do you still have this kind of feature? So actually. Yeah, it should work. Uh -huh. Most of the Q, it depends on what kind of QoS you were uh, uh, setting up in your volume types, right? Because you can set up your volume type such that all the QoS settings are based upon the back end itself, and the back end does the QoS limiting and rating for you, and not Nova and, and libvirt, which is what I think you might be trying to distinguish there, uh, if I'm hearing it correctly. Yeah. Right, thank yeah, so, so the Cinder back ends would do that for you. Got the acknowledgment slide? Oh. <laughs> Got the URL for the slides, too. 
All right, so here's a couple uh, acknowledgments. Um, so one of our other developers on the Cinder team, Gorka, um, he actually created an amazing um, blog post that talks about in depth how to do a deployment of Cinder standalone. And that's kind of what gave me the, you know, the, the motivation to, to do a presentation here to talk about it as well as do something crazy here. One comment about this blog post, it's absolutely great, but minor comment, it was pretty old before Cinder client implemented no else feature. So, <coughs> so now we have for now it works out of the box if you installed Cinder client from the GitHub repo. All right. Thank That's you. It. Thank All you. Right, thanks, guys.